In this video, we'll talk about binomial random variables. But before we talk about binomial random variables, let's spend some time understanding Bernoulli random variables. Now, let us assume that you have a biased coin, which gives a head with probability p and tail with probability 1 minus p. Now, Bernoulli random variable can only take two values. So, in this particular example, let us assume that you have a Bernoulli random variable x and it takes a value 1 if a head comes up and takes a value 0 if it is a tail. So x equals 1 if the coin toss results in a head and x equals 0 if the coin toss results in a tail. Now the probability mass function or the PMF of this random variable is given in this form. That is, it, take, it, it takes value 1 with probability p and value 0 with probability 1 minus p. So it's a very simple random variable and the expectation of this random variable is just going to be p because you have to multiply 1 with p and 0 with 1 minus p to find the expectation and the expectation is just going to be come out to be p. Now Bernoulli random variables are very easy and they form the basis of a binomial random variable and that is why we have spent some time here understanding Bernoulli random variables. Now some examples of a Bernoulli random variable are, are as follows. For example, a person can be hel healthy or sick with a certain disease with certain probability and you can model this using a Bernoulli random variable. Similarly, a test result for a disease can come out to be positive or negative. Once again, this can be modeled as a Bernoulli random variable. There are many other cases in which Bernoulli random variables can be used. Now let's see how Bernoulli random variables help us understanding binomial random variables. Now let us assume that you have a biased coin which is tossed n times. So this biased coin gives a head with probability p and you're tossing this coin n times. We assume that all these tosses are mutually independent. That is one coin toss does not influence the outcome of another coin toss. We'll model this using a binomial random variable. To do that, let us go back to a Bernoulli random variable and let us assume that xi be a Bernoulli random variable, which is one if the ith toss gives a head. Therefore, the different xi's i running from 1 to n are independent Bernoulli random variables. Each xi can take a value of 1 or 0, depending on if the ith toss is a head or a tail. Now, let y be another random variable which denotes the number of heads that we see at the end of these n coin tosses. So, what is the relationship between the y and the xi's? This is very easy. Essentially, y is the summation of all the xi's. So, if you have a save out of 10 coin tosses, you get five coin tosses to be heads, then those five x i's will all be one and the remaining x i's will be zero. And y, which if we can express that as a summation of all the x i's, would just turn out to be five. Okay, so y is the binomial random variable that we're going to study in this particular video. So what is the PMF of y? To do that, let us assume, let us first consider the different values that y can take. Now y can take the value of 0 when there are no heads. Now if there are no heads, the probability that each toss results in a tail is 1 minus p and there are n such tosses. So the total probability that there are going to be no heads is going to be 1 minus p raised to the power of n. Now the reason why we can do this is that all the, all the coin tosses are mutually independent. The result of one coin toss does not influence the result of another coin toss. Now y equals n will happen when all the coin tosses result in a head. And the probability of this is going to be p to the power of n. Having studied these two extreme cases, what we have to next figure out is what is the probability that we can have k heads out of these n coin tosses. That is y equals k. To do that, we have to figure out how we can have k heads out of n tosses. So we have n tosses and we need k heads. Hence, we can have n choose k possibilities. That is what we are denoting as the first term in that expression for the probability the n choose k. Now, when you have k heads, the probability that you will have k heads is going to be p to the power of k because each head occurs independently with a probability p. And you're going to have n minus k tails, which is going to occur with a probability 1 minus p raised to the power of n minus k. And this can hold true for all different values of k. This is a generic expression. So for example, if we want to figure out what is y equals, this is probability y equals 0, that is no heads, we just substitute k equals 0. 
n choose k is 1. So you will see that this probability pops up to 1 minus p to the power of n, which is probability no head heads. Now, if you add up all the different probabilities, they are going to add up to 1 because that is the law of probability. And you can see that that is nothing but the binomial expression. So to understand what how binomials and Bernoullis are related, a binomial is nothing but the sum of independent Bernoullis. And we denote a binomial probability mass function, or PMF, by binomial n, p. These are the two parameters of the binomial distribution. n is the number of tosses, and p is the probability of getting a success in that particular toss. Okay, so now let's look at a particular PMF of a binomial distribution. So we consider a binomial with parameters n equals 9 and p equals half, and the binomial PMF looks in this form. It, it basically tapers off at two ends, and in the middle we have these two high bars. So it looks uh, very similar to something that's rising up and then tapering down. So now let's now that we've studied binomial random variables, let's look at a particular example to see how we can use a binomial random variable. To do that, let us assume that you have an urn which has 10 blue balls and 20 red balls. So in all, the urn has 30 balls, out of which 10 are blue and 20 are red. Now you're picking nine balls with replacement from this urn. With replacement mean that you first pick a ball, and then when you before you pick the other book, the next ball, you return this ball into the into the urn. So every time you're picking out of 30 balls, and you can draw the same ball twice. Now let x be the random variable that denotes the number of blue balls. So we are interested in the probability that x equals 3. That is, you pick three blue balls out of these nine attempts that you make. Okay, so now we have to figure out first what is the probability of picking a blue ball. Now, note that you are picking balls with replacement. So every time you are picking uh, one ball out of 30 balls. So there are 10 blue balls and 20 red balls. So the probability of getting a blue ball is 1 over 3. And the probability of getting a red ball is 20 over 30, which is 2 over 3. Okay, so next, what we have to do is we have to find out what is the probability of any sequence of nine balls with three blue balls. Okay, to do that, what we have is we have the probability as 1 over 3 to the power of 3, 2 by 3 to the power of 6. So you are having three blue balls, which gives us the probability of 1 over 3 to the power of 3, and there are going to be six red balls, which gives us 2 over 3 to the power of 6. Now, how many such sequences of nine balls contain three balls? So this is a permutation or a combination that we are interested in. That is essentially a nine choose three. Those are the number of ways in which you can have three blue balls out of a sequence of nine balls. Hence, the probability of getting x equals three is going to be nine choose three, one over three to the power of three, two by three to the power of six. This is nothing but the binomial distribution. Hence, this particular problem of finding the number of blue balls in, uh, in those nine balls can be expressed as a binomial. The parameters are going to be 9, 3, 9, 3, and x is just the binomial random variable. Okay. With this, I'll complete this video. Thank you for watching. If you like my videos, do subscribe to my channel.